OK. So as you guys are passing up those sheets of paper, what we're going to look into is the sine of 105 degrees. Now, previously, what we've talked about with this is when we want to evaluate for 105 degrees, that's not an angle that we have on our unit circle that we can easily evaluate for, right? We don't have a y coordinate on our unit circle that we can evaluate for um, the sine of 105 degrees. So what we looked at then, John, was applying the sum and difference formulas, right? And so we looked at it and said, you know, can we break up 105 either to the sum or difference of two angles that we can evaluate on the unit circle? And you know, an example would be like 60 and 45. Uh, we could would add up to be 105. But you guys remember the sum and difference formulas, that's kind of a lot of work, right? Remember that whole homework assignment, page 384? That was like, it's a lot of just practice over and then simplifying stuff like that. So the other way that we want to look at it is by also using our double or our you know, half angles. And what we're going to go over today is working with the half angle. So what the half angle formula states is if I have the sine of u divided by 2, that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of u divided by 2. So rather than using the sum and difference angles, which we did and we plugged in, but then you had to do sine, then you had to do cosine, and then you're simplifying all the stuff, and sometimes it just got a little bit too much, we can also apply the sum and um, the double and half angle formula if it applies. So let's go and take a look at if this applies for our half angle. So I'm going to say u over 2 is equal to 105 degrees. right? If I say the sine of u over 2, so that means sine of 105. right? So 105 degrees is u over 2. But we need to use the cosine of u. So if 105 is u over 2, then what is u? Well, let's do that. We can just solve for u. So we say u is then equal to 210 degrees. Does that kind of make some sense what I did? OK. Now the next thing is you guys notice we have a plus or minus, right? Uh, when using the sine, it's going to be plus or minus. But we're only going to be concerned about using the sine value for which quadrant our angle is in. And we notice 105 degrees, that's going to be in the second quadrant. So therefore, sine is going to be positive or negative in the second quadrant. Thank you. Jeez. I don't need to hold that right side. Oh, sorry. OK. So, um, so now what we're going to do is let's plug in our values. So simply what I have is the positive version of 1 minus cosine of 210 degrees all over 2. Now we just need to evaluate, well, what the heck is cosine of 210 degrees, right? So we go back to our unit circle. And remember, this half angle formula only works is when we double that angle, we can find the cosine of that value. So we go to 210 degrees, which is 30 degrees past 180. And we know here's our point, which is going to be a negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Right? Because we know our unit circle so very, 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 very well by this point. So therefore, the cosine represents our x coordinate. So by plugging this in, I now have the square root of 1 minus a negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2. Very follow me? Sure. So far, all I did was I evaluated for cosine of 210 degrees, which is a negative square root of 3 over 2, and then I plug it in. Now, the next thing that we want to do is get, we have a fraction divided by another number. Let's get rid of these fractions. And if you guys remember, in tangent, we did this. And what we did to get rid of the fraction is if I multiply by 2 over 2. Very good. So let's multiply by 2 over 2 and see what we get. Notice we have a double negative, so that's now going to turn positive. So therefore, I now have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 over 4. Yes? The only time we looked at something like that is when you have an equation that's going to equal 5. If you're going to multiply something, you have to do it on both sides. Right? You, whatever you do on the left side, you have to do on the right side. Okay? However, 
if I say x is equal to x over 5, is if I have a fraction and I multiply the top and the denominator by the same number, I'm not changing the expression. Or I'm not changing, yeah, the left side of this expression, right? Because you can say 1 half is equal to 2 fourths, right? So I'm not, as long as you add, multiply the same number on top and bottom, you're not changing the problem. All right, so that, that's the kind of difference. When we multiply on once, when we did this, we had to make sure it's either you multiply it on both sides or you multiply it on the top and bottom to keep it the same, okay? Now, the last thing, Ben, that you want to remember is the square root of A divided by the square root of B is equivalent to the square root of A over the square root of B. So you guys look at this answer. I can't simplify more the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3, but can I simplify the square root of uh, 4? Yeah. So 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2. And there you go. That's our answer. I'm sorry? Because the square root of 4 is 2. And it's a positive because sine's in the so second you quadrant. That's it. You don't reduce any further? No, nope, that's as far as you're going to be able to reduce. Yes? Where it says 2 minus the square root of 3 equals 2 thirds, 2 plus 9 and 8, 2 minus 2, I would just fix 2 plus 9. Is that the biggest thing? Yeah, but I have minus a negative, which turns it to a positive. Oh, I don't know what I was doing. You're right, it's positive. Thank you.